Hi everybody, this is Salvador. Thanks for tuning in to the B-19 Sleeper. This is episode 5 of the series that we're doing. And we're restoring this 1985 Bigfoot camper back to its original glory. But we're also going to be adding a little bit of, you know, spice of modern day technology. We have come a long way so far from how we originally got it. This camper has been sitting for about 16 years, just neglected. And it had a lot of problems with the frame. But in this episode, we're gonna see if we can start installing some of these new upgrades. So, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start disconnecting stuff in the back and then here in the inside. And then hopefully I can remove it by myself and take those measurements. All right, so let's do it. Whoa. Yep. No wonder. like it's just this, this, that one, the LP line, that disconnect, these 12 volt cables from the inside here, and then the frame, one right here, and one right here. drive Oh shit. <laughs> oh man. Alright, so I disconnected the 120 power outlet, the LP line right here, 12 volt cable. I have it up here now. It was there. And all the pieces that were holding that cable. So now let's go to the front. The screws are right here. I have to pop those covers off. I'm gonna use a blade. Oh, went back in. There 
Here's the inside. Just filled with debris, leaves, twigs, and, and that's with the cover on. It's probably because that's that was a nest, maybe for some critter. Started raining. So we got twenty two and a half. So this will fit, but that won't. That's twenty three. So it turns out that I can't remove this because the metal is just crimped right here, and there's another framing underneath. The only way to pass it through the door is to remove the door and the frame to the fiberglass show. Yep. And I have to remove the butyl tape and if I want to be doing that, I might as well do the windows, reseal those. Nope, then I might as well buff it out. <laughs> might as well buff up the gel coat while I'm at it. One thing leads to another. Right here we have the distribution panel and inside of there the converter, the water heater, and there's the cable we use to connect to shore. That cable right there is the one for the trailer hookup. And so right now I'm just going to study it a little bit, get familiar with it. And our circuit breakers. Here I'm just getting some cardboard and I'm just gonna mock up the size of the two batteries. That way I can kind of play around inside the camper and see where it could uh, fit best. So since it's been raining quite hard, I've been noticing some water has been kind of getting in right here on the floor. And so I put these rags and they're soaking wet. And then what I did as another test is I just temporarily put butyl tape. And it kind of worked, but still not good enough because butyl tape doesn't really stick that well when the surface is that dirty. I'm going to be using sealant. We're going to refurbish the whole entire door, make sure it's watertight. We're just going to remove the door anyways because I know water has been getting in and this proves it. Look at this. It's helping some, but this is still soaking wet. So I'm glad I did that. The batteries that I got are actually just about half an inch smaller than what I mocked it up, which is good because that means I can actually install it in here. I originally wanted to install it back on this corner since it's really like empty space, but I just couldn't fit, I can't fit two of them here and I, I can't fit like an L either. And this is the ideal location since this whole entire side of the camper doesn't have much weight as compared to this side that has all the equipment oh i had to put this back on by the way just because there was just too much going on here this is how you know Salvador is so detailed because he <laughs> literally measured everything to see if it would fit you know what's so crazy you start with one thing and then you end up wanting to do something else because when we took out the refrigerator i was like man this is a good time to just you know play around with the, the, the plumbing system because I, when I was trying to put the batteries over here, I'm like, man, but look at this. That, this pump is so loud, it shakes the whole entire camper. 
part of it is because it's actually attached to the wall itself. But then, look at that nastiness. <laughs> and it draws like 7 amps. So we're going to replace that and the tubing and all that good stuff. But then that got me wondering, man, I should just switch out the whole plumbing system to PAX. Might as well, right? Or oh, like there it is. You can see all that. All that good, good. All right, there you go. Ooh, that's heavy. So I was hunting for a refrigerator that we can use for this system and I kind of settled for 12 volt refrigerator just because you know we're going to be having a battery bank solar system problem is that the width between here and there is not enough for your typical 12 volt refrigerator so i actually had to get one that was a little bit more narrow luckily rec pro they had one it's a little bit more narrow than I would like, but we're gonna go with it. It also means that we're gonna have a bigger refrigerator, more space, but I do have to remove one drawer, maybe two. I would get a better look in the inside. Easy one to tackle is this is this bed area. What we found out is that this is actually loose. This was supposed to be up here higher. Oh, and we still gotta put in the last remaining sheet metal screws that go into the frame. So strange. There's like glass in here. Woo! Yeah, I gotta I'm gonna wear a mask. Just one that broke off over there. I'm gonna use this one to make a new hole and then insert this one right there. Cause that one broke inside. So I'm just gonna go right next to it. All right, so that's the old washer right there, and it's just, it's pretty bad too. It's really rusty. So I found some hardware laying around. These are a little bit better.
one. All right. with this since we're going to be working electricity and such. says 20 gallons so it basically just circles around goes in through there goes behind where the shower is and we can see that on the other side where the opening is on the exterior then it comes around and that top one that you see that feeds into a T that's that same one feeds in and then sends it back to the left uh, two of them to go one for the faucet and one for uh, the toilet and then goes around and then feeds in right there for the faucet and then it goes towards the water heater I'm gonna go lift the tank up. There's a lot going on here. We have the breather tube right there. Then we have the water fill, this green white one. And then way at the bottom, that greenish one that goes to the flooring, that's the drain. And then the clear tube back here, that's where the pump gets its water from. I was gonna try to remove this water tank out of the closet area, but I just measured across the width of this tank and it actually can't even come out through this closeted area because this beam or this column is like right in the way. So that's pretty interesting. They must have put this in really in the early stages of the construction of this camper. The old one was uh, three gallons per minute. This one's 3.5. The strainer right here. This one supposedly is a lot quieter from all the ones that I've been looking at. So we'll test that out. But what we're gonna do as an upgrade is we're also gonna put in an accumulator tank. And this is gonna help with the, pul the pulsation. Essentially there's a bladder in here and it comes pre-charged, but essentially you you hook it up and then you set it to about 3 PSI lower than the cut-in pressure for the water pump. So that means if you turn on the faucet, you're going to get the soft trickle, but you're not going to get the pump to turn on until this the bladder starts pushing out the water. And then once it starts losing the PSI, then the water pump will kick in. So it's kind of like delayed 
but sometimes you don't need it to be you know on as soon as you open up the faucet together it should make for a pretty quiet system <laughs> oh damn it stinks